The Isaac Walton League is a national conservation organization with a mission to conserve the soil, air, woods, water, and wildlife of our country. Through our Save Our Streams program, volunteers across America monitor water quality and take action to restore and clean up streams. This video focuses on biological monitoring using the Save Our Streams method of the Isaac Walton League. This method is best used for freshwater non-tidal streams. Through this method, you collect and sort and identify aquatic macroinvertebrates, the small insects and crustaceans that live under the water. The first thing you want to do is determine what type of stream that you have, a rocky bottom or a muddy bottom, because that will determine the type of equipment that you use and the type of collection technique that you follow. We're standing right now in a rocky bottom stream. This is a stream with riffles, which are the areas where water is bubbling over the rocks. And you're looking for rocks that are about the size of lemons to cantaloupes. We have a couple of riffles here. One is right next to me. There's another riffle behind me and there's another in front as well. If your stream has riffles, the riffle area will be the best place to collect bugs. As water bubbles over the rocks, it's mixing with the air and making that area rich in dissolved oxygen the bugs need. It also provides a place for bugs to hide from predators and a source of food, like algae, they can scrape from the rocks. Want to make sure that you start from the downstream portion of your stream and work your way up. You also, for safety, you want to make sure that you're wearing closed toed shoes or boots and that the water level is not above your knees. If you have any sores or cuts on your hands, you want to wear waterproof gloves so that you won't come into contact with any bacteria. We are going to use a kicksane net to monitor our riffle. So this net is three feet by three feet, which is the same size as the sample area that we want to take. So you can use your net to estimate the sample area. Then you want to place your net in the downstream portion of the riffle, and you want to angle the net back as you hold it so that as much water is flowing through it as possible, but water is not flowing through the top. So if you'd like to come and take over holding the net, I can show you the next part. So now that we have the net in the right place, we're going to anchor the bottom of the net with some rocks so that water and bugs can't escape out of the bottom of the net. So we're going to take a couple of rocks from our three by three foot area in front of the net and use those to anchor the bottom. So if you'd like to help me. Sure. We can place three or four rocks down. That's very good. Now that we have the bottom of the net anchored with rocks, we're going to start rubbing the rocks that are in the three foot area in front of the net. So let's go ahead and take these rocks. You want to hold each rock as close as you can to the net under the water, rubbing vigorously with both hands. And as you finish each one, you just want to set it to the side so you know that you've finished with that one. The reason we're doing this is to dislodge any macroinvertebrates that are clinging to the rocks. That's one of their favorite habitat areas. And you don't have to worry about harming any of the bugs while you do this. They should stay intact. You just want to make sure that you're not taking two rocks and rubbing them together, just one at a time with your hands. Now, how do you know how long you should be doing this for? We're going to rub rocks until we've rubbed all the rocks that are in our three foot area. Now that we've gotten the rocks all rubbed and they're on the sides, we are going to do the second part of our monitoring, which is to kick up the bottom sediments, which is where the name kicksane net comes from. So what we want to do is disturb those first two inches of, of stream bottom. That's where the bugs will burrow in. And you want to make sure that you're not grinding those bugs into the dirt. You want to just 
get your toe under that sediment and kick up. So we're going to do that in the stream. And you want to start at the far end of your three foot area away from your net and work your way in. And as you can see, the water starts to get very muddy. And this is good. That means that you are disturbing those bottom sediments. And you just want to work your way closer to the net as you do this. When you finish with kicking up the bottom sediments, the next part is going to take a little teamwork because we need to rub the rocks that next, are we will pick on the bottom of the net, net sort them into look so that we get any bugs that are clinging to them off. You can but use at the your same fingers, time, we have to hold down the bottom to move so the bugs that those from bugs the net don't into escape. ice cube trays. So you and, and I are going to work together to hold the bottom of the net, rub those rocks, and then when we're finished, we're going to pull the net toward us and up. So usually I just keep one hand on the net and then hold that rock with the hand that's holding the net and my other hand to rub. Okay, and now we're going to lift, pull toward us and lift up. We want to keep all of these leaves and anything else that's in here in the net and we can fold it on up, make sure we have that end so we can now carry it over to the table. When you've taken the net out of the water, someone from your group should come back and put those rocks that we set aside before back into their place in the riffle. We want to make sure that those bugs have a habitat to come back to next time. So next you're going to pick the bugs that you found off of the net. And you can either use your fingers for that or forceps, spoons, or other tools. Go ahead and look very carefully through the leaves or any other debris that's on the net because your bugs are going to want to hide in there and you want to make sure that you are not missing anything. It's also always a good idea to just scan the edges of your net so that any large bugs aren't escaping off the edge. It's important that you pick all of the bugs off of your net and identify all of them because our method depends upon the different tolerances to pollution of the specific bugs you find as well as the overall diversity of the bugs. Not sure what you found in your net? The Isaac Walton League has great easy to use field guides and keys that will help you identify all the bugs. Once you have picked all the bugs off the net and you've finished sorting and identifying them, you're going to mark off what you found on your data form and come up with a water quality rating of excellent, good, fair, or poor. Once you have identified all of the bugs, you can start to complete your data form. As you can see, the bugs are divided into three categories for sensitive, less sensitive, and tolerant of pollution. And because this is a qualitative survey, there's no need to mark down the numbers of each bug that you found, but you can use letters A, B, and C to give a general sense of the population of macroinvertebrates in each category so you can see how it changes over time with A for less than 10, B for 10 to 99, and C for 100 or more. Once you've done that, you count up the number of letters you have in the sensitive category and multiply that by 3 to get a score. And for your less sensitive, you're going to multiply those by 2 and the tolerant by 1. You add those three numbers together to get your final score, and that gives you your water quality rating of excellent, good, fair, or poor. The back side of the data form allows you to tally up the bugs that you found in each of your three separate samples that you take. So you can use all of the number ones to tally up your first sample, 
the two is to tally up your second, and the third to tally up your third, so you can get three separate water quality ratings, and then you're going to take the best of the three. Once you've finished that, you're going to take your net and walk upstream to another riffle and start the process again. You're going to place your net, anchor the bottom with rocks, rub those rocks, kick up the bottom sediments, and get another sample. Then you're going to identify all the bugs on that sample and fill out a separate data form. And you'll come up with another water quality rating. When you finish that, you're going to go upstream again and do this a third time. So you're filling out three different data forms to get three different ratings. And what you're going to do is take the highest rating, and that is going to be your final answer about the water quality of your stream. We do things this way to make sure that you have gotten the best habitat out of your stream and the maximum number of bugs. And typically when you do this, you'll get two ratings that are about the same and one that's a little bit higher. When you're finished monitoring and you've completed your data form, you can release the bugs back into the stream. Be sure to clean off your net thoroughly by swishing it in the water to make sure that you get all of the bugs and other debris off of it so it is ready to go for the next time you monitor. If your stream does not have riffles, you're going to use a D-frame net. And it's called that because the shape of the frame of the net is a D, and it also has a long handle. The net is one foot wide, and you're going to note that because when you take your samples, you're going to want to take one square foot samples from each habitat type. One of the types of habitats that we monitor using the D-frame net is submerged woody debris. We have a log here that's submerged in the stream. And so we're going to try to dislodge any macroinvertebrates that might be clinging to that log or the bark. So we're going to use the wire frame of the net to vigorously scrape at the bottom here. And then you can run your net through the water in an upstream direction to catch any bugs that might have been dislodged. One of our most productive habitats in a muddy bottom stream is the area where the banks are overhanging and the stream water goes underneath the banks, especially as here where you see a lot of roots from the tree that are touching the water. So you want to get your net under there and scrape at the bottom. You can also scrape upwards. And this is a great spot where a lot of bugs like to hide. So another one of our habitat types that we can monitor with the D-frame net is a silty bottom with organic matter like a leaf pack. So we have some leaves in the bottom here and we're going to, we're going to use the frame of the net to dig down about an inch or so and then to sweep upstream for about a foot and try to get some of those leaves right into the net. Another habitat type that you'll find in a muddy bottom stream is an area of gravel where water is bubbling over the gravel. So these are smaller rocks. They're not big enough to be considered a riffle area, but it can be a good habitat type. So first you want to take your net and scrape along the bottom and disturb that bottom sediment in an upstream motion. The other thing that you can do if you have some larger gravel pieces or small rocks is you can hold the net with one hand and use your other hand to rub the small rocks in front of the net, holding them down in the water. You're going to be taking 20 scoops altogether from the different habitat types. So as you do this, your net is going to get filled with sediment and organic matter. 
One thing that you can do to remove some of the fine silt is to swish the net back and forth in the water. You want to make sure that the water isn't going over the top of your net because you want any bugs that are in there to stay in there, but this will help clear your net of some of the smaller debris and will make it easier to find the bugs later. And after you've taken each scoop, you want to dump that out into a mesh bottom bucket. The advantage of the mesh bottom bucket is you can actually hold it down in the water and the stream water will rise up through the mesh and keep your bugs happy and hydrated. And it also will give you another chance to get some of those fine sediments to come out of the bottom of that bucket. Once you have collected your 20 scoops and they're in the bucket, you're going to bring your bucket back to the table with the white tablecloth and go ahead and dump that out on the table. You're going to have a lot of debris to look through. And you can go ahead and spread that out on the table. And start picking your bugs. Again, either with your hands or with forceps or other tools. You can use a spray bottle filled with water from your stream to clean off the debris as you pick through. Once you've picked all the bugs and leaf litter off of the net, you want to pick the net up and just look underneath. This is one of the reasons why you use the white sheet on top of your table or on top of the ground, because there are some bugs that are small and might escape through the net, but they'll get caught on that sheet. You want to clean off your net and you can do that by inverting the net and then swishing it in the water. You want to thoroughly clean off any bugs or other debris that are clinging to the net so it will be all ready for next time you go out to monitor. By monitoring water quality, you are providing valuable information about whether your streams are safe for fishing, swimming, or wading. You can share that information with your community and with local agencies by posting your data to our website. And we hope to see you out in the stream soon.